again officially. We will be recording this service and streaming it to Zoom and Facebook. Visitors need to fill out the yellow contact tracing sheet so they, we are able to contact you in the chance that we need to inform you of any COVID exposure. These are available at this door and back there too. And the greeters can help you find that. We are pleased to be able to offer a hybrid service that includes members and friends present physically or virtually. And now we're just about ready to begin. Good morning and welcome. Welcome to all who have braved the weather in person, to all of those on Zoom, and to those of you on Facebook streaming. My name's Kathy Ryder. I'm the membership services liaison for the board. And here's our welcome. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Congregation. We are a religious community who commit ourselves to diversity. We hope to nourish human differences, those of gender, race, age, ability, sexual orientation, political views, culture, class, and religious belief. Welcome to all who treasure freedom of conscience in the search for truth. We, we promise to do our best to provide you with the spiritual home. We extend a special welcome to our visitors today. We hope, to, we hope you follow our Facebook page and to participate in Zoom and receive announcements about special events and our religious exploration classes, please sign up for our weekly email. There should be a link in the comments section on our Facebook page where you can sign up. I'd like to draw your attention to recent announcements for those in person, they are printed in your order of service. And there are links in the UUC newsletter and weekly UU connections for those watching online. And I have a special announcement here today. This Sunday in Religious Exploration, the youth will be participating in an Action Sunday project to decorate UUC with yarn and leaf hats Oh, and leave hats, scarves, and mittens for anyone in need. Not leaf scarves, leave scarves. Uh, the RE program is also seeking donations for the upcoming holiday gift shop on Sunday, December 12th. Please drop off your donations in the holiday gift shop donation bin located upstairs next to the elevator. And to show our support for vaccine rates being on the rise, we have made buttons. All fully vaccinated youth in RE will receive a free button and vaccine card holder, along with our amazing fully vaccinated team of volunteer teachers. Everyone else wishing to proudly show off their, vac their vaccine status can purchase the button and card case combo for a $3 donation to the RE program. And that was from Amy Johnson, the RE coordinator. Thank you.
Oh, that was fantastic. Thank you, Julia. <laughs> well, I'm Ken Adler from the Social Responsibility Committee. My, uh, my pronouns are he and him. And uh, there are a lot of opportunities coming up during the month of December. Whenever anyone tells you that they have an opportunity for you, don't you just kind of cringe back and say, wait a second, I don't want another opportunity. But first of all, I wanted to say the month of December is chock full of opportunities. We've had over 40 people step up so far to fill these opportunities. And so that's more people than we have in this room. Our congregation is doing very well, and I feel kind of funny asking you for, for more, but I'll bring up three more opportunities. Here we go. Number one is that our 50-50 Share the Plate recipient for the month of December is the Bolton Refuge House. Um, I don't know that I have to do much of a sales job for them at all. They do very important work in our community. Sadly, they have had to expand their facilities these past couple of years there's, because there's so much of a need for shelters for people that are uh, affected by domestic violence. But they are uh, mentioned that the majority of their work is actually done with people who have either moved on or haven't yet moved into their shelter. And they serve something in the order of uh, well, thousands of people per year, so it, it's a very worthy cause. Um, the second opportunity is that uh, this month we are, are, we are uh, having the Holiday Giving Tree, which we've been doing for a couple of years now. Our congregation partners with Lutheran Social Services, and, and they find individuals in the community that are very deserving of some version of holiday gifts. The majority of these are children, of course. Um, you can find more information about this actually in today's order of service. There's a thing about the giving tree. But what it, it consists of is we have a website and there are lists of people on there. We don't give their names, of course, uh, but it tells their age and it tells what they, Lutheran Social Services actually ask them, what would you really like for the holiday this year? Uh, the trouble is that the deadline for the giving tree is a week from this coming Tuesday, so you have to move quickly. There's a tree in the back of the room. That's where you can place the gifts when you get them together. And um, it's just a very nice gesture that you can do to, to help somebody's holiday. And then the other opportunity is a kind of a tougher ask, I think, and that is that a week from this Friday in the afternoon, we're having a blood drive right here in the basement of this building. So far, 18 people have signed up, but our goal is to get 31 people. So we've got a lot more open slots. If you are able to donate blood, if you have friends or family or enemies or anybody else that you can talk into donating blood, uh, the information is all in the UU Connections that comes out you know, by email each week. Otherwise, if you're having trouble with that, just give Chris Simpson a call at the UU office and she'll get you signed up too. We're making good progress, but we've got a little ways to go. But the other thing is I have to just thank the 40 plus people of, of the congregation that already have signed up for things. This is really amazing to have this kind of participation and uh, it's really fun to be a part of this congregation and see that we can accomplish so much. Thank you. Good morning. I'm the Reverend Virginia Wolf, Minister Emerita of this congregation, and I'm glad to be here today, and I'm thankful for your presence here in church or on Zoom or Facebook. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm recovering from a cold, so I, I know you will excuse me if I cough or have to take a drink of water <laughs> during this service. Our service today is about life's many gifts. Let me open with questions about what, what a gift might be. What if we experienced everything that comes into our lives as a gift? Roses and thorns, a sunny day and a stormy one, a sweet new grandbaby or the painful death of a father, peace and war, apple pie and a stomach ache. What would happen? No more good and bad, want and don't want, accept and reject. No more moaning and groaning, welcoming everything, present to everything, 
full of curiosity, wonder, love, and gratitude, engaged in giving and receiving as a way of life. Is it possible to experience everything as a gift? Is it desirable? This morning, let's take time to be grateful for all of life's gifts. Come, let us worship. Please join me in reading the words for lighting the chalice. Life is a gift for which we are grateful. We gather in community to celebrate the glories and the mysteries of this great gift. Good morning, my name is Bobby Korta, and I have a story for all ages today. It's um, a little bit about how we got this planet that we're living on. It's called Sky Woman Falling from Braiding Sweet Grass by Robin Wall Kimmerer. In the beginning, there was Sky World. She fell like a maple seed Pirouetting, pirouetting on an autumn breeze. A column of light streamed from a hole in the sky world, making her, marking her path where only darkness had been before. It took a long time to fall. In fear, but maybe hope, she clutched a bundle tightly in her hand. Hurtling downward, she saw only dark water below. The geese nodded at one another and rose together from the water in a wave of goose music. She felt the beat of their wings as they flew beneath to break her fall. Far from the only home she'd ever known, she caught her breath at the warm embrace of soft feathers as they gently carried her downward. And so it began. The geese could not hold the woman above the water for much longer, so they called a council to decide what to do. Resting on their wings, she saw them all gather, loons, otters, swans, beavers, fish of all kinds. A great turtle floated in their midst and offered his back for her to rest upon. Ah, gratefully, she stepped from the goose wings onto the dome of his shell. The others understood that she needed land for her home, and they discussed how they might serve her need. The deep divers among them had heard of mud on the bottom of the water and agreed to go find some. Loon dove first, <sighs> but the distance was too far, and after a long while, he surfaced with nothing to show for his efforts. One by one, the other animals offered to help, otter, beaver, sturgeon, but the depth the darkness and the pressures were too great for even the strongest of swimmers. They returned gasping for air with their heads ringing. Some did not return at all. Soon, only little muskrat was left, the weakest diver of them all. He volunteered to go while the others looked doubtfully. His small legs flailed as he worked his way downward and he was gone a very long time. They waited and waited for him to return, fearing the worst for their relative. And before long, a stream of bubbles rose with the small, limp body of the muskrat. He had given his life to aid this helpless human. But then the others noticed in his paw was tightly clenched, and there, when they, when they opened it, there was a small handful of mud. Turtle said, here, 
put it on my back and I will hold it. Sky Woman bent and spread the mud with her hands across the shell of the turtle. Moved by the extraordinary gifts of the animals, she sang in thanksgiving and then began to dance, her feet caressing the earth. The land grew and grew as she danced her thanks from the dab of mud on turtle's back until the whole earth was made. Not by Sky Woman alone, but from the alchemy of all the animal's gifts, coupled with her deep gratitude. And this is the time in our service for giving. Each week we give half of the non-pledge offering to help groups that are helping others. Our 50-50 share the plate recipient for December, as Ken told us, is the Bolton Refuge House. You may scan to donate or text to give 84321. Checks can be mailed to the UUC 421 South Farwell Street, Eau Claire. On-site donations may be made in the donation drop box, which is right back there on that center post in the gathering room. With gratitude for the abundance in our lives, we give to help people in need and to support the work of this congregation. And now Julie uh, will play us something wonderful. Thank you, Julia. Please join me in the congregational response as printed in your order of service. From you I receive, to you I give, together we share, 
and from this we live. Now, Angela. Hi, my name is Angie, and I'm a newer member here at UUC, and my pronouns are she and hers. And I'm going to be reading from Braiding Sweetgrass today, and it's about the drum. And it was kind of spiritual for me to be asked to read this, as I had just made a drum the week before. So I brought it as a visual to go along with the reading. When I close my eyes and wait for my heartbeat to match the drum, I envision people recognizing for perhaps the first time the dazzling gifts of the world, seeing them with new eyes, just as they teeter on the cusp of undoing, maybe just in time or maybe too late, spread on the grass, green over brown. They will honor at last the give, give give away from Mother Earth, blankets of moss, robes of feathers, baskets of corn, and vials of healing herbs, silver salmon, agate beaches, sand dunes, thunderheads and snowdrifts, cords of wood and herds of elk, tulips, potatoes, luna moths, and snow geese, and berries. More than anything, I want to hear a great song of thanks rise in the wind. I think that song might save us, and then, as the drum begins, we will dance, wearing regalia in celebration of the living earth, a waving fringe of tall grass prairie, a whirl of butterfly shawls with nodding plumes of egrets, jeweled with the glitter of phosphorescent wave. When the song pauses for the honor beats, we'll hold high our gifts and eulate their praises, a shining fish, a branch of blossom, and a starlit night the moral covenant of reciprocation calls us to honor our responsibilities for all we have been given, for all that we have taken. It's our turn now, long overdue. Let us hold a give, giveaway for Mother Earth, spread our blankets out for her and pile them high with gifts of our own making. Imagine the books, the paintings, the poems, the clever machines, the compassionate acts, the transcendent ideas and perfect tools, the fierce defense of all that have been given, gifts of mind, hands, heart, voice, and vision, all offered up on behalf of the earth. Whatever our gift, we are called to give it and to dance for the renewal of the world and return for the privilege of breath. And the drum represents the heartbeat of Mother Earth. Thank you, Angie. That really, having the drum really added to that. I appreciate it. Did you know that the popular film, It's a Wonderful Life, evolved from a short story by Philip Van Doren Stern, entitled The Greatest Gift? It seems clear that the producers of the film wanted to identify what the greatest gift was in the title of the film. The greatest gift is a wonderful life. As most of us know, George Bailey the main character played by Jamie's, Jimmy Stewart, loses his life when an angel grants his request not to have been born. Then experiencing a life in which he's absent, George comes to find out how precious his life is to him and how important he is to others. The film celebrates the gift of life as George shifts his attention from everything that seems wrong to everything that seems wonderful. It's a good reminder to pay attention to all of the gifts life offers us, both those that we want and those that we don't want. 
Reading and thinking about gifts or overwhelmed me fairly early on. I think I collected notes in the tune of 250 pages before I quit. <laughs> there are so many gifts. Um, it, the book, uh, Braided, Braided Sweetgrass, Indigenous Wisdom, Scientific Knowledge, and the Teachings of Plants by Robin Wall Kimmerer celebrates the gifts of the earth. Strawberries, ponds, trees, flowers, green beans, and so forth. In her words, it's a world full of gifts simply scattered at our feet. Unfortunately, as she points out, we take these gifts for granted, or in a capitalist society, we think of them as commodities. She argues persuasively for considering them gifts and for creating a gift economy. She explains, gifts from the earth or from each other establish a particular relationship an obligation of sorts to give, to receive, and to reciprocate. But the purchase of objects requires no relationship, no reciprocity, and no obligation. The exchange ends once parity has been established and equal exchange. And buyers then own the objects and are free to do with them as they wish. Neither respect nor an obligation to care for the objects or the seller is required. Using a garden as one example of a gift economy, Kimmerer details our part. We still sow, fertilize, weed, water, and keep the predators away. And the plants grow and produce food for us. We provide the, the gifts of labor and care and the plants freely offer their gifts of food. And we're grateful, ready for the cycle to begin again. This is reciprocity. There's also gratitude and wonder. Listen to Kimmerer's definition of a gift. A gift comes to you through no action of your own, free, having moved toward you without your beckoning. It's not a reward. You cannot earn it or call it to you or even deserve it, and yet it appears. Your role is to be open-eyed and present. Gifts exist in the realm of humility and mystery. As with random acts of kindness, we do not know their source. What if we experience life in this way all the time, aware of its many gifts, grateful and taking responsibility and whatever ways seemed appropriate to nurture the land and each other so that the cycle of giving, receiving, and recipro reci reciprocating was never broken. Surely we would be free of much suffering, perhaps of climate change, and we would be much happier. Like indigenous peoples, Buddhism acknowledges that we exist in a vast network, network of life, continuously the recipients of the generosity of others. These are Peter Joseph's words. He goes on to say that in the final analysis, what you're asked to give is attachment, what you're asked to give away <clears throat> is attachment to everything, including attachment to your virtues even to the idea that you're a generous person. In other words, it's not enough to give external things, material or immaterial. What you're asked to give is yourself. Buddhist scholars emphasize that generosity is fundamental to letting go of greed, clinging, and self-centeredness, and to recognizing that quite naturally in an imperfect world, Everything flows from one hand to another. We may never really own anything. Death makes this ab abundantly obvious. Then we leave behind everything we thought we possessed. Free of grasping after things, we are open-handed 
and able to receive the abundance of the world and to let it go when it's time to let it go. We give with the same gratitude that we receive. As Buddhist teacher Marsha Rose puts it, the gift that can, in the gift that cannot be given, our realization that there's actually nothing that can be held onto can become a powerful factor in cultivating our inner wealth of generosity, which is a wealth that can never be depleted, a gift that can never be forever be given, a seamless circle that feeds itself. As the Buddha tells us, the greatest gift is the act of giving itself. We are only temporary caretakers of all that is provided. Essentially, we own nothing. As this understanding takes root in us, there's no getting, possessing, and giving. There's just spaciousness that allows all things to remain in the natural flow of life. Norman Fisher, another Buddhist teacher, explains further. There are no separate givers, receivers, or gifts. All of life is always giving and receiving at the same time. This is our practice and our joy. So we practice giving, both receiving and giving gifts in this spirit. Some gifts we, some, some gifts we see as gifts, like the birthday or the holiday gift, and others we usually don't see as gifts, the gift of sunlight, the gift of breath. The practice of giving extends to all forms of giving the more you study it, the more it seems that giving is the whole of the Buddha way. Traditionally, there are three things to give, material gifts, the gift of Dharma, and the gift of freedom. But really, there are many more things to give, the gift of listening, the gift of love, the gift of creation, attention and effort, to make a poem or a painting is to practice giving, as is cooking a meal, cleaning a room, putting a single flower in a vase. The famous Buddhist priest, writer, and philosopher who founded Japanese Zen Zodo, Dojin, writes that to launch a boat, build a bridge, and earn a living are acts of giving, to be willing to be born and to die is to practice giving. Tony Robbins, author of Unlimited Power, identifies 10 gifts of life. First, the gift of gratitude. Gratitude is the single most important practice you can add to your life. As Tony says, when you are grateful, fear disappears and abundance appears. When you fill your mind with gratitude and thanks, there's no room for negative emotions. You will live in a state of beauty and positivity, bringing light to everyone around you and to the universe. The universe will respond in kind. The second gift he, he identifies is the gift of emotion. Emotion makes us human. They give life meaning and purpose and create our most joyful experiences. And, and they're also, and also our most de devastating moments. They don't always feel positive, yet when we learn to tap into what they're telling us and use them to grow into a better versions of ourselves, <clears throat> even emotions like sadness, fear, and anger can create positive change. Third, the gift of drive. What does every successful person from athletes to actors, from doctors to entrepreneurs have in common? A deep belief in themselves and an insatiable drive to be more, to create more, do more, and give more. This hunger destroys the fear of failure. It laughs in the face of limitations. It makes you unstoppable. You can learn how to embrace the gift of drive to achieve more than you ever thought possible. Fourth, the gift of connection. Love and connection are two of the most powerful needs human beings have. 
They can start wars and end them. They bring us our highest our highest highs and our lowest lows. Without them, life seems empty and cold, but real connection does not just happen. It's a set of actions we take every day to be present, listen deeply, and allow ourselves to be vulnerable. It's a choice. Fifth, the gift of consciousness. You're awake, but are you really fully conscious? Do you feel emotions deeply? Do you practice compassion and empathy? Do you live with purpose, confident of your place in the world? When you embrace the gift of consciousness, you open yourself up to a new level of awareness. You connect to your highest self and unlock an ability to surrender that brings true happiness. Six, the gift of growth. If you're not growing, you're dying. That's the plain truth. It's about more than achieving goals and collecting material wealth. It's about learning to turn obstacles into opportunities and find the lesson in everything. As Tony says, no matter how many mistakes you make or how slow your progress, you're still way ahead of everyone else who isn't trying. Give yourself the gift of growth today. The seventh is the gift of grace. Grace is a guiding force in our lives. It shows up when we need it and when we least expect it. It's given for no reason at all, and it exists with or without you. Some call it luck. Some call it God. You know it when you feel it. It's a sense of awe and wonder for the small things in life. When you learn to recognize and embrace the gift of grace, you can pass it on to others and change the world. The eighth is the gift of presence. We're not just here to take, we're here to give. That's what makes us feel alive. Giving is the ultimate gift of life and you don't need money or special skills to do it. The best way to give to others is to be fully present, to give deeply of yourself, your time and attention. The gift of presence, of experiencing every moment fully, is also the greatest gift that you can give to yourself. Ninth is the gift of forgiveness. Forgiveness can be one of our greatest challenges in life. It isn't easy to forgive those who have hurt us, and it can be even harder to forgive ourselves. When you trade your expectations for appreciation, you will realize that forgiveness isn't a gift you give others. It's a gift you give yourself. It is freedom from blame and anger and pain. It's the ability to learn from the past and let it go. Tenth is the gift of joy. When you embrace these other gifts, connection and emotion and gratitude and forgiveness, you will be able to embrace pure, genuine joy in your life. The type of joy that makes you feel elated, like you're walking on air, it has nothing to do with what's happening around you. You can create your own joy, no matter what. It starts right now. As Robin suggests in speaking of the gift of emotion, what we usually think of as negative emotions are also gifts, because they tell us something needs attention and provide us with an opportunity for understanding ourselves and others. In previous sermons, I talked about how fear, anger, and suffering are gifts when accepted, understood, and transformed. Joy Layden says this beautifully in her poem, Diseases, Gifts, that you must accept what you cannot prevent that fear inverts the meaning of success, that you can be fearless 
When fear is all you have, that fear is all you have. That you aren't alone in loneliness. There's a whole world here, a pregnant, fascinating glimpse of stomach and hips, of the life-creating love. You're finally sick enough to feel. That that glimpse can stop you from melting into the futures you fear. You will and will not have everything you need to live. Night, ice plums, a lap and a laptop, a name, a parent, whipped cream, gossip, steaming plates of life and death. That this is the end of the world, that you will survive it. In his poem, Incantation, Chris Abani points out that there are even gifts in dying. What words can you wrap around a dying brother, still dying, even now? A man who has not eaten for a month, sips at water and says, even thirst is a gift. He asks what other gifts God has given him I'm your gift, his daughter says from a corner, and he smiles and rasps. You can only unwrap a child once. The rest is prayer and even more prayer. You sing softly to him in a language only the two of you speak, and he snores softly in your palm, breath and blood. And Paul Dunbar, claims in his poem, Compensation, that even death itself is a gift. Because I have loved so deeply, because I have loved so long, God in his compassion gave me the gift of song. Because I have loved so vainly and sung with such faltering breath, the master in infinite wisdom offers the boon of death. So here we have several views of gifts. That of Robin Wall Kimmerer, an indigenous person who's also a professor of botany. That of Buddhists. That of Tony Robbins, a life and business coach. And that of these poets who see gifts in suffering and death. All testify to the abundance of gifts available to us and to the joy of both giving and receiving. Equally important, they point to a way of life, one of living in gratitude for everything that we receive and all that we can give, one that allows us to be aware that it's a wonderful life, no matter what life hands us, which is what George learns in the film of that name. Although difficult at times, Let's strive to open our hearts and hands to all of life's gifts. Let us give back to the earth and all of its inhabitants. Let us practice gratitude and abundance in all that we do. Let it be so. Please join me in reading the words for extinguishing the chalice. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Let's close with Mary Oliver's What is the Greatest Gift? Here she notices many gifts, but celebrates the gift of otherness, the existence of someone or something that is not her. This other lifts her out of herself and evokes joy, an emotion only possible 
because of the presence of that which is not the self. Oliver writes, what is the greatest gift? Could it be the world itself, the oceans, the meadowlark, the patience of trees in the wind? Could it be love with its sweet clamor of passion? Something else, something else entirely holds me in thrall that you have a life that I wonder about more than I wonder about my own, that you have a life courte courteous, intelligent, that I wonder about more than I wonder about my own, that you have a soul, your own, no one else's, that I wonder about more than I wonder about my own, so that I find my soul clapping its hands for yours more than for my own. Go in peace, go in love.